brothers and sisters in Islam, the devil's departure. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when Ramadan approaches, the eight doors of Jannah are open. The seven doors of hellfire are closed. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bestowed. The forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is released. And the shayateen, the devils, are locked up. All of this is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And imagine that it was showering rain, which you're very used to. Imagine this rain are the drops of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they choose the homes on which they will drop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, His forgiveness, His rewards will drop on certain people. And there are certain people who will be chosen for this Ramadan to feel the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it. Imagine this Ramadan as an intensive course. The Prophet ﷺ said, the shayateen are tusafadu shayateen. They are imprisoned and chained up during Ramadan. Yet a lot of us, we get temptations and whispers during Ramadan. Isn't that right? We still get whispers in Ramadan. The meaning of that is, number one, the shaytan prepares allies before Ramadan comes. So bad friends, whom Allah's mercy does not reach them. Remember the rain that falls on the homes? The rain that falls on the homes, well, this type of a person's heart is so dark and so full of rust and has neglected the Quran and Salat for so long during the year that not even the month of Ramadan or any Quran or any masjid can affect them anymore. Their soul is not nurtured. So the shaitan uses these people to do what? To influence the Muslims, the believers, he leaves them behind during Ramadan. The other thing the shaitan does is he whispers to you and puts in doubts in your minds on top of your desires before Ramadan comes. A lot of people unfortunately today, they prepare for Ramadan exactly on the night of the eve of Ramadan. In the night when everybody's debating and arguing is Ramadan today or tomorrow. This group does it this way, this group does it that way. And then uh, there is a disunity that happens <laughs> on the eve of Ramadan. So the shaitan is there right up to the eve of Ramadan. And then the person begins to fast Ramadan and tries to do all the good deeds. And then by the time Ramadan ends, it's like nothing happened. It's like as if it was a wave, a sudden wave that came and went. It's not a leap, it's not a hurdle for them. But then there are people who prepare two months before Ramadan. Did you not hear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informing us about the virtue of Rajab? It's the second last month before Ramadan. It's the month before this one. Rajab, Rasul Sallallahu used to increase in fasting. So you need to train just before Ramadan so that you can get the best, the best out of Ramadan. My brother here mentioned the beautiful story about the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they used to prepare for Ramadan, it was six months in advance. And when Ramadan finished, they, they stayed for six months after it, worshipping Allah and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to specifically have accepted their rewards of Ramadan. So it's a whole year round. It's not just one month. The shaitan knows this and he is your enemy. And the shaitan knows that the month of Ramadan, they're going to be away. So they have to prepare to make you lose. They have to prepare to make you lose. So we prepare a little bit before it. If you are still able to increase in your fasting, and wallahi, wallahi, it has its enormous effect on you by the time you reach Ramadan. You will be more prepared, more ready than anyone else. And in fact, you'll be the type that will feel that secret mercy which is bestowed upon an individual during Ramadan of an enormous energy that no one else can feel. You'll find yourself being able to wake up in the middle of the night without any problems. Your eyes will just open automatically at the time of suhoor and it's like you've slept all night. Your heart will continue pumping as though it is reading Quran. Wallahi, I know of people who are so used to their words repeating the Quran during Ramadan that when they go to sleep and they wake up, they feel that their lips were dry as though they were reading the Quran all night. These are people who have prepared themselves. You know, if you want to run up a hill, a very steep hill, 
and there is a flat land before it. You don't wait until you get to the edge of the hill and start running upwards. That's going to take tremendous effort. But you start running a long pace beforehand on flat land so that when you reach the high steep, at least you will get that extra strength to get you halfway there with ease and only halfway you need to put the energy. Because Ramadan is an uphill and when you reach the top, insha'Allah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ May his nose be rubbed in dust three times and the Sahaba said who ya Rasulullah? He said مَنْ بَلَغَ رَمَضَانِ وَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ Whoever reaches Ramadan and they haven't been forgiven. So there is no greater opportunity than the time of Ramadan for our forgiveness. O you who has regretted their sins. O you who knows of secret sins that no one else knows about. And you, and you cry in the night and you feel so guilty about it and you've given up almost hope. This is your time insha'Allah ta'ala to get rid of this burden off your shoulders and for it to replace in your heart a sweetness, sweetness, sweetness of happiness, of iman that you have never felt before. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the shaitan comes directly from the front directly from the back through his deception and from the front through his allies and leaving a seed in your desires before Ramadan and from the sides the shaitan finds it difficult the, sh the angels are there my question is and here is where the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his love for you is really shown why didn't Iblis mention from above and from the bottom he said I will come to them from the front the back the sides but he didn't mention وَمِن فَوْقِهِمْ وَمِن تَحْتِهِمْ have you ever thought about that? وَمِن فَوْقِهِمْ وَمِن تَحْتِهِمْ And I will approach them from the, above them and from beneath them. Why didn't he say that? Because he knows that above you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose mercy descends upon you. And when you lift your arms up to Allah in dua, Allah does not allow any evil, any obstacle, any distraction between you calling upon your dear Lord and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responding to his beloved servant. It's a direct, direct connection. And Allah says in the Quran, and if my servants ask you about me, O Messenger of Allah, tell them I am close, I am very close. You know, like what a mother says to a child when the child wakes up in the night and it's very and the child's very scared, seen a nightmare. Mom, dad, and they come close to them and they say, Don't worry, I'm here, I'm close, I'm with you. You go to school and they say, Don't worry, I'm with you. Just remember your mom, remember your dad. You know, I'm with you. When a dear friend tells you wherever you go, just hold this, remember I'm with you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you like the nurturing mother saying to its child, I am with you. For inni qareeb, I am close. I will respond to the person who calls upon me when they call. So let them respond to my call. Let them respond to me. Because the way that I command you, Allah is saying, is the way to me. Is the way to me. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us something or prohibits us something, He is actually drawing the line or the road for you in how to get close to Him, how to feel His presence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the point where, to the point where you continue to do the compulsory actions until you do the voluntary actions after that, until Allah says, I become your eye which you see with, your hearing which you hear with, your leg which you walk with, your hand which you touch with. And if you were to ask me for anything, I will give you. And if you seek refuge in me from anything, I will give you protection. And there is nothing worse to me, Allah says, hated to me, than the time when I have to take the soul of that person out and he is feeling the pain while I hate to do so, but only to bring him back to me.